And guys, in this next news story, a crime group has been jailed for a combined 94 years following a weekend of terror which saw a car rammed into a home while children hid inside. We can see the, the Mitsubishi Shogun entering the street in Hartlepool and the suspects attacking the vehicle on the driveway there. A long-running bitter feud by organised criminals in County Durham exploded into a weekend of violence on the 7th and 8th of January this year. Seven men have now been jailed for 94 years and seven months following a large-scale police investigation nicknamed Operation Coastal. The gang's ringleader, James Stevenson, was sentenced to 16 years and nine months in prison. Wayne Griffin got 19 years and nine months. Jonathan Miller got 16 years and nine months. Paul Frayne got 14 years. Connor Ellison got 13 years. Shane Lee got nine years. And Graham Oliver got five years and four months. Detective Superintendent Andy Reynolds in charge of Operation Coastal at Durham Constabulary said, Incidents like this are very rare in County Durham and Darlington and I hope this investigation sends out a clear message to criminals that we will not tolerate such extreme violence on our streets. So the trouble began on Saturday the 7th of January 2023 when a silver Mitsubishi Shogun rammed into a property in Hartlepool and a gang of men led by Stevenson smashed up a parked car on a driveway of a house and set fire to it. As the Shogun rammed into the house four times, leaving some structural damage, it endangered four children and a woman who were hiding inside. Following the attack, the group dumped the Shogun and burnt his house. Two other cars were later collected by police, who found baseball bats and accelerants inside the vehicles. The following night, the rival crime group carried out a retaliatory aggravated burglary at a property connected to one of member of Stevenson's crime group in Horden. Stevenson gathered the rest of his group they armed up and waited in a property in Horden, anticipating a further attack. Shortly after, a stolen transit van began ram-raiding two shops owned by Stevenson, which was a vape shop and a tanning salon. The whole attack was caught on CCTV. Stevenson and his group became aware of the attack and sped off in a second black Mitsubishi Shogun towards the junction of 5th Street and the van was still ramming into one of the shops when they arrived. Several gunshots were fired from Stevenson Shogun towards the transit van and a high-speed chase began. The vehicles were last seen speeding around through the Haswell area on CCTV and the second Shogun was again found burnt out. Durham Constabulary launched a major investigation calling it Operation Coastal which involves significant digital and forensic evidence. A hundred strong team of officers gathered evidence to piece together a timeline of events. It led to 14 initial arrests and saw more than 400 hours of CCTV examined, mobile phone data analysed, intelligence gathered from the community and raids carried out. Inquiries led armed officers to a remote farm nearby where bullets including one identical to those fired in 5th Street were found. A bottle of accelerant dropped outside a house in Hartlepool also provided key DNA evidence. Drugs including cocaine, heroin, cannabis plants were found during searches of properties totalling a street value of up to £96,000. After initially denying the charges and offering no comments in police interviews, they all admitted the offences at Newcastle Crown Court back in June. Advances in forensic technology meant digital data was also uncovered and proved vital. However, the gun fired during the incident on Sunday the 8th of January has never been recovered. Deputy Superintendent Andy Reynolds said, Durham Constabulary quickly mobilised a significant level of resources to investigate this offence and began the offenders to justice. Detective Superintendent Andy Reynolds added, Durham Constabulary quickly mobilised a significant level of resources to investigate this offence and being the offenders to justice. We will not tolerate this type of behaviour and because of this investigation, the seven defendants are now facing lengthy sentences behind bars. Given the nature of the crimes they commit, members of organised crime gangs will do what they can to avoid facing punishment, but the overwhelming evidence gathered in this case meant they had no option but to plead guilty to all their charges. Communication which showed they were together or had been together previously when we would say that the preparation was being made to commit this offence. We also executed uh, a warrant uh, on a place called Mount Pleasant Farm, owned and controlled by Paul Freyne. On the farm, on the back of a flat back vehicle, we recovered the shell of a 9mm bullet. And what we were able to establish through the forensic evidence was that 
that 9mm bullet had been discharged from the same weapon used in the offence on 5th Street. And we can actually go a step further than that as well. We can see here, because of the angle of the bullet, which we later recovered from the front of the building in 5th Street, we were able to see that that bullet had travelled from the Mitsubishi Shogun. So we were able to prove that the people within that vehicle definitively discharged a gun and that bullet had travelled from the direction of that vehicle. Did you intend to kill the people who were smashing the shops up? Oh, come on. When suspects are arrested, um, they're all interviewed under caution by, by, by police officers. I had no part in this crime. I'm not guilty for it. I've got no acknowledgement of it. That's all I'd like to say. All of the defendants in this case either chose to make no comment to those questions or denied any involvement in, in the offence. That's the back of your truck? Yeah. That is a bullet. That's a 9mm casing from a bullet. Can you tell me what that's doing in the back of the truck that you move in and out of there? Haven't got a clue. Okay, haven't got a clue. We've obviously undertaken the, these extensive levels of inquiries from witnesses to CCTV to forensics to searches, arrests, etc. And we, we're able to build a really strong case against these people. In the face of this, what we would say is overwhelming evidence, all the defendants chose to plead guilty. And guys, in another news story, a man from London has been jailed for 21 years for his role in supplying cocaine worth an estimated £1 million to the streets of West London. Sam Coleman was sentenced at Kingston Crown Court for his role in arranging large-scale drug deals following a Met Police investigation dubbed Operation Eternal that spanned three years. The Met said Coleman was also involved in the conspiracy to supply more than 26 kilos of cocaine and his ultimate aim was to make as much money as possible. In February 2021, officers raided his house and car and seized cocaine, £36,000 in cash, a knife and watches. Images found on Coleman's phone showed large kilo blocks of cocaine, large amounts of cash and large amounts of cannabis. In his search history, there was also evidence of a conversation in which he planned to buy cocaine purity test kits. Coleman was arrested at his home and charged. Investigators used data on EncroChat chat provided by European partners in 2020 to bust major plays in the drug screen and EncroChat chat was an encrypted messaging service for subscribers that was shut down in June 2020. On receiving data relating to those using EncroChat chat in London, the Met launched Operation Eternal to target EncroChat users believed to be operating from the capital. They attributed the owner of Lousy Brandy Handle to Sam Coleman and they began investigating his EncroChat handle in late 2020. Coleman had obtained the drugs from another EncroChat handle who was working as part of an organised crime network with access to large amounts of cocaine. Lousy Brandy had facilitated the supply of these drugs to others via another EncroChat handle, the Met said. There had also been significant discussion by Lousy Brandy in relation to the obtaining of firearms and ammunition. Detective Constable Andy Chapman from Operation Eternal in Specialist Crime said Coleman arranged large-scale drug deals with his ultimate aim to make as much money as possible with no thought of the misery and devastation caused in communities by drug supply and the violence it leads to. He thought that EncroChat gave him anonymity and the freedom to openly enrage serious crimes and shielded him from law enforcement. However, multiple teams across the Met have worked for several years to identify Coleman and build what was a rock-solid case against him. Said Operation Internal Investigations over the last three years have resulted in the Met identifying and jailing major players in the criminal fraternity and stemming the flow of drugs and guns onto the streets. Following his trial, Coleman was found guilty of conspiracy to supply Class A drugs, conspiracy to transfer criminal property, conspiracy to press prohibited weapons, conspiracy to possess ammunition, possessing a controlled drug of Class A with intent, and possessing criminal property. And he was jailed, as I stated, for 21 years. Transfer criminal property, so guys, conspiracy to press prohibited weapons, conspiracy to possess ammunition, possessing a controlled drug of Class A with intent.